With the emphasis these days on cost reduction and quick turnaround, more people than ever are populating their own prototype and short run boards. Lasercut PCB Stencil's new low cost polymer stencil can help you realize significant savings over traditional techniques. Even if you've never loaded your own surface mount boards before, you may be surprised by how easily, quickly, and inexpensively you can achieve excellent results. Begin by securing the PC board to your work surface. To lock the board in place, we are using our low-cost hold-tight frame. Note the finger notch that makes board extraction easy. Here is the low-cost polymer stencil. It's much smaller and easier to maneuver than big steel stencils, far less expensive to buy, and far easier to store between uses. We'll use double-sided tape to secure the polymer stencil. You can also use plain masking tape if you prefer. Carefully align the stencil and press it into place. Now we'll set it aside while we organize the components. If you don't already have a favorite way to organize your components for mounting, a plain white plate makes a convenient staging area. Start by marking the plate around the edge with the part value and part numbers right off the bill of materials. If you like, you can draw a pie segment lines or use masking tape between components. If you run out of plate and still have more components, start a second plate. Now it's time to have some fun. Lay out a line of solder paste along the edge of the stencil. Using a pliable edge like a credit card, we like Starbucks cards best, swipe the stencil with the paste. You can make several passes if you need to. The important thing is to be sure there's no excess solder on the stencil when you're done, or you may leave too much solder on the pads when the stencil is removed. Now for the moment of truth. Lift up the stencil and remove the board. How did we do? It looks good from here. Now it's time to place the parts. Take your time and make any minor adjustments you need to. Remember that parts will tend to straighten out by themselves when the solder flows. Note that this board has plenty of variety. There are SOICs, SOs, QFNs, along with plastic Molex and USB connectors, not to mention assorted SOT23s, Rs and Cs. Hey, at this rate, we'll be through in no time. Time to do a little board cooking. If you have access to a reflow oven, by all means use it. But if you don't, you will be amazed at the results you can get with a very inexpensive tabletop convection oven like this Black & Decker toaster oven. We like this one because it has four quartz infrared elements and convection heating, so it does the job very quickly. Moreover, it has two racks, so if you get ambitious, you can do a fair number of boards at the same time. After placing the board in the oven, we'll turn the temperature up to preheat levels below the solder melting point. This allows the large components to catch up with the smaller ones. We'll allow about one minute of preheat time, then turn the heat up. Now we'll turn up the heat and watch for the solder to flow. When the parts kick, the board is ready to serve. Remove the board and let it cool. Here's our finished board. Not bad at all. Thank you, Chris. You're welcome, Hagara. <laughs>